Hey there, Heather Creekmore here. You're listening to day 16 of the 30 Days to Pray for Your Body Image series here on the Compared to Who podcast. I'm glad you're listening. I hope you are too. I hope you've been with us every day of this series. If not, hey, guess what? You can listen whenever. You can do this 30 days of prayer every single month. And friend, it may be that's what you need to do for a season because we need freedom from body image issues. I know personally, I was bogged down in body image issues for so many decades. And I tell you, friend, it feels good to be free. It feels good to have that mental space back. It feels good to not be obsessing over the scale and the mirror anymore. And I want that for you too. And oh, hey, if you need more help, that's okay. I needed help, but I am here to coach you. So if you're interested in coaching, go to comparedtohu.me slash coaching and let's talk. But today, we kind of have a hard topic today. I'm sorry to spring this on you, but it is so important. Today, we're going to talk about envy. Now, I want to straight up start with definitions because I talk about this in The Burden of Better. If you haven't read The Burden of Better, grab that book because it really does a good job breaking down the distinctions between these words that we confuse a lot. So envy is different than jealousy. Now, what's funny is a lot of us are comfortable saying, I'm jealous, I'm jealous, I'm jealous. But you don't hear people say, I'm envious. That sounds... I don't know, evil almost, right? Um, But envy is when someone has what you want and you kind of hate her for it. And so what happens in the arena of body image is that someone has that size we want, that slim body we want, that curvy body we want, that hair we want, that skin we want. And we kind of start to see these seeds of hatred spring up in our hearts. Now, that sounds severe, doesn't it? Like, you know, you're probably thinking hatred. That's kind of a strong word, isn't it, Heather? (laughs) But that's really what it is. In fact, a clinical definition of envy, uh, according to an article I was just reading in Psychology Today, said envy is, I liked this, envy is personal pain caused by a desire for the advantages of others. And I thought, wow, that's that's fascinating. Personal pain, but isn't that what's what's really happening? You see someone, you're like, oh, she has that look I want. She has that body I want. And you feel a personal kind of pain. You hurt, right? Because as you compare yourself to her, you feel like she's getting ahead. She's winning that made up beauty contest that so many of us compete in our heads, right? She's getting more attention. Maybe she's getting more dates. Maybe you feel like her husband is nicer to her than yours is to you. Whatever it may be, we take that attribute that we are envious of. And so in this case, a lot of times it's something physical, body related. And we have a personal pain because we feel like that person has something we want and now has the advantage because of it. Now, jealousy is a word that is a little different than envy because jealousy is losing something or being afraid you're going to lose something, I should say, that you have a right to. So if your husband is talking to another woman, you have a right to be jealous. The Bible tells us that God is a jealous God. He gets upset when we serve other idols, right? Because we should be serving him alone. We should be worshiping him alone. And we talked about idolatry in the last two episodes, but God is a jealous God. There is a way to be holy, right? Because God is never not holy. I think I said that right with all those double negatives, but God's always holy. And so there's a way to be jealous that is holy, but there is not a way to be envious that is holy. Envy is a sin that keeps us trapped. It keeps us miserable and it keeps us trapped. It keeps us in personal pain because we are always looking at what she has or how she looks and we forget to be grateful, to be content, to praise God that we are fearfully and wonderfully made and he has a great purpose for our lives, no matter what our body size, our body shape, what limbs we're missing, what things could look better according to Vogue magazine standards. 
God has it all under control. He is sovereign. He is good father who cares about us deeply and isn't playing favorites up in heaven. Like, oh, I want her to have a size two body. So she has a great life. And all the while, I want you to have a size 15. 15. There's no size 15. (laughs) Size 16 body. How about that? Uh, So you can struggle with this your whole life. No, that is not what our good God in heaven is doing. We all have struggle. And part of that idol thing that we talked about the last couple days is recognizing that just because a woman has the body that you want, that you think you would be happier in, it's not her salvation. It's not necessarily bringing her joy. She is still going to have struggle in this life. We all struggle. Life is hard. And and friends, I don't know if you're like me or not, but somehow growing up, I mean, I saw struggle, but I I don't know. I guess naively, I just figured maybe I would be able to beat it all. (laughs) Like maybe if I just did everything right, then I wouldn't struggle. And what that led to was frustration, right? Because I would try to do things right, try to do things perfectly. Some of you perfectionists can relate to that. And yet it wouldn't go as planned. Oh, friends, we all have our own journeys. We all have our own paths. And the good news is that God has a plan for those journeys. He has a plan for those paths. But the worst thing we can do is get caught up in the sin of envy, believing that someone else's body is taking her down a path that is better than the path we're on. Friends, envy is a sin. We have to treat it like a sin. We have to confess it and repent and ask God to help us turn and not be envious anymore. So if this is an area where you struggle, pray with me today. Dear Heavenly Father, I thank you so much for the gift of your grace to help us see these areas where we get stuck. And God, I acknowledge envy as an area where I get stuck. And for any of my friends listening today who struggle in the same way, I hope you'll acknowledge too. Hear their prayers, God, as they acknowledge envy as a place where they get caught up in comparing themselves to someone else, wishing they had her body, her life. And what we forget in that is that, God, you designed us on purpose for a purpose. God, please forgive us of our envy. God, we repent of our envious ways right now. God, help protect our eyes from coveting what others have or what others do or what others look like. God, help us to find our contentment in you. Help us to understand how your grace is real in our lives and how we don't have to be envious of anyone else. God, I thank you for how good you are to us, that you are a good father and that we can trust you even when our circumstances don't go as we wish they would, that you are still trustworthy and that you still love us more than we could ever know. God, I thank you for helping us defeat the sin of envy in our lives. God, convict us when appropriate, when we're envying. Whisper to us, tell us it's envy so we can turn right away and not say suck in this sin. It's in Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Well, our verse of the day is from Proverbs 14, 30. It goes like this. A heart at peace gives life to the body, but envy rots the bones. Oh, friends, don't let envy rot your bones today, this week, this month, ever. Confess that sin of envy and move forward in the grace and freedom from a God who loves you. Thanks for listening today. Hey, leave a review if the show has touched you. That would be the kindest thing you could do for me. You can go to compare to who.me slash podcast and you can scroll down to the bottom of that page and find all the places you can leave a review. Thanks so much for listening. I can't can't wait to be with you tomorrow. Have a great day. Bye.